So this is, you know, there's, there's a lot of um, alternative alignment techniques that have been discussed over, I'll say, the past five to ten years. I think with the introduction of robotics into knee arthroplasty, more and more of us are discussing a patient-specific alignment philosophy or kinematic alignment philosophy. And I think, you know, we've all seen studies like the one on this slide where, you know, we used to pat ourselves on the back because the 10-year revision rate was, you know, 2%. But the reality is just because the knees aren't being revised, not all of our patients are happy with their total knees. So in this study, you know, at, at one year from knee replacement, 19% of these patients were, were unhappy. And the question is, why? You know, our, our total hip patients do very well. Why, why do the total knee patients lag behind? Um, so as we've gone to some of these kinematic alignment uh, ideas or patient-specific alignment, you know, this is a study out of HSS looking at 200 varus knees, uh, 100 of them cut with mechanical alignment, 100 of them cut with kinematic alignment. And what they saw is less pain and, and better functional outcomes at a year to two years with patients that were treated with kinematic alignment. Uh, go ahead, next slide. And so I, my, my personal thought on this, and I'm not alone, you know, some of our patients are born with constitutional varus. And I think uh, there's been some studies that I think Chit Ranawat you know, helped define, define constitutional varus. And those patients, you know, we used to make cut the femur at zero, cut the tibia at zero, and do a big soft tissue release to get the leg out straight, and that may not be what's best for that patient. So some of our patients are valgus, some of them are varus, and I think it's, it's um, you know, it, it not only allows us to do fewer soft tissue releases, which hopefully results in less pain, but functionally they may do better. And so I was just gonna briefly discuss my algorithm for uh, patient-specific alignment, or what I what I do with robot, and this has kind of been a learning experience over the past four or five years. But I typically will divide a varus knee into flexible, not flexible, not correctable. I do the same thing for valgus knees. And the two things that you know have to be taken into account if you're a femur first surgeon, which I am, are posterior osteophytes on the femur, and then genuirecrobotum or hyperextension. But I think we're starting to get away from that X-ray you see in 2005, and and more of the X-ray that you see in. 2022. So a, a flexible varus knee, this is the patient that comes in, they've had a previous medial meniscectomy, the, the deformity is pretty easily correctable on the robot. Sometimes these patients will even be put in, it's very similar to that live surgery that we reported. I didn't have to manipulate the components into varus on that patient and the soft tissues balance just fine. So it's an easily correctable deformity, uh, minimal changes to component position. In this case, you're mostly using the robot to balance the flexion extension space. A varus knee that's correctable, I would say this is probably 80 to 90% of varus knees that come through the operating room. So they have mild varus deformity. It's typically four to 10 degrees. And you can typically balance the soft tissues within four degrees of malalignment. So I'm talking about uh, hip knee ankle alignment, so long leg alignment. So I, I will typically put two degrees of varus on the tibia, two degrees of varus on the femur, externally rotate the femoral components slightly to open up the posterior medial flexion space. And I would say 95% of the time, you can then cut that knee with this technique, not do any additional soft tissue releases and, and be very satisfied with the balance of the knee at the end of the case. This is the example that we just discussed. Uh, somebody asked from the audience, this is the non-correctable varus knee or more severe varus knee. And for me, I'm willing to go out of mechanical alignment by four degrees. I figure sometimes I'm going to be a little off, so it could be five or six degrees, but there's some good data from Mayo Clinic, uh, Mark Pagnano and Matt Abdel that, that says the, the longevity of those implants still seems to be, be fine within these kind of slight deviations from zero on the mechanical axis. And in this case, I'll leave the lateral side tensioned where I want it for the polyethylene that I'm interested in, and then I will release uh, like we talked about the PCL and, and do a large medial release or a reduction of the medial plateau to get the medial side to open up to catch my lateral side. And valgus knee, very similar algorithm. You know, you have very flexible valgus knees that sometimes just have more posterior lateral wear. 
these are typically easy to correct. Yeah, you can you can leave them in relatively neutral uh, alignment, uh, just like the flexible varus knee. Again, this is probably the majority of valgus knees that come through the operating room. They're four to ten degrees of valgus, uh, and I will. Some people feel differently about this. I am fine cutting my tibia in a couple degrees of valgus and my femur in a couple degrees of valgus. If I'm going to cheat one direction or another, I typically will leave the tibia at one degree of valgus and then put three degrees of valgus on the femur. And then you do have to slightly internally rotate the femoral component to close down the posterior medial space, uh, which you know some of us are trained that that's, that's a bad move for patellofemoral mechanics. I really haven't found it to be an issue as long as I'm only deviating within, say, three degrees of internal rotation in relation to the posterior condylar axis. And, and when I do that, I'll sometimes cheat my tibial component into slightly extra external rotation in relation to the tibial tubercle just to make sure that the tracking of the patella is reasonable. And then there's the severely you know, valgus knee that's not correctable. And again, I treat this just like I treat a varus knee. I get the polyethylene on the medial side where I want it, and then I'll do a soft tissue release to open up the lateral side to catch the medial side. So those six scenarios are you know, 99% of the knees that we take care of. The one caveat, if you're a femur first surgeon, because you, you don't have access to the, the posterior aspect of the knee uh, until after you've made the bone cuts, I look at the lateral x-ray and I'll look clinically at the knee during surgery. If there are posterior osteophytes in one compartment, I'll plan that knee one millimeter tighter in extension. If it's large osteophytes, I'll plan that two millimeters tighter in extension. Because once you remove those posterior osteophytes on the femur, the extension space in that compartment will open up. And it's, it's never, I, I've learned this the hard way over the years. You don't want to have a sloppy extension space with a tight flexion space. That's a difficult problem to solve. I'd much rather be in a situation where I have to recut the distal femur. Um, record bottom. So it's interesting. You know, I, I look at some of the knees that we do these days, and if I, I hook a patient up to the navigation software on a robot, not uncommonly you'll see 10 to 15 degrees of, of record bottom. And you know the cuts that you're taking off the distal femur, you know, I'll distalize the femoral component. We think we get about three degrees of correction per millimeter. I generally won't take somebody that has a record bottom knee and correct them to zero. If they're 10 degrees, I might correct them to say four, but I will distalize the femoral component a bit in order to, uh, to clear up the record bottom. The one thing that I've found, if, if you do that too much, you'll end up with mid-flexion tightness, which is an awkward feeling in the operating room. But some of these distal resections are on the order of just a few millimeters. Uh, the Vela system is, is well adapted to this type of philosophy for patient-specific alignment. I mean, you can use it for any, any philosophy that you have. But the computer really helps you plan the position of the femoral and tibial components, multiple degrees of freedom. Uh, you can adjust for the so patient's soft tissue envelope, and the robotic saw executes the plan very efficiently. <clears throat> 